Hi there, I'm Dr. Mitchell. Uh, I'm this, one of the senior uh, parathyroid surgeons and the medical director at the uh, Norman Parathyroid Center and the director of the parathyroid surgery division at the Hospital for Endocrine Surgery in Tampa, Florida. Uh, I'm going to share an um, interesting uh, reoperative parathyroid surgery case with you today. I started doing this because, um, well, obviously I've, de I've dedicated my career to treating um, patients with uh, surgical parathyroid disease. I've become um, particularly interested in reoperative uh, parathyroid surgery cases, patients who've had unsuccessful operations uh, in other, other, other places and often find that they uh, don't have a plan or they don't feel like they have any other options. And uh, these cases are more difficult, um, both cerebrally to think through and technically, and um, I'm hoping that doing some of these will show people out there who find themselves in that situation that there might be options for them. Uh, so the case for today, this is uh, a young 45-year-old woman. She was diagnosed with classic primary hyperparathyroidism in 2022. She lives in New York and she underwent an operation locally. Um, during that operation, she had a pretty extensive bilateral operation. They looked on both sides of the neck. She, her her preoperative imaging test suggested uh, that she had a parathyroid tumor on the left side. And so that's where they started. But unfortunately, they didn't find anything. They couldn't find any parathyroid glands on that side. So they went to the right side and found two parathyroid glands, both of which they removed. Uh, unfortunately, um, in reviewing the pathology report, these were very small. They, they weighed five milligrams. That's really tiny. So these were clearly normal parathyroid glands. I'm not sure why they decided to remove them. Uh, they went back to the left side of the neck because I think they knew they weren't going to cure this patient with those glands being removed and took some of the left lower pole of the thyroid out, um, sort of hoping to find something. And unfortunately, another normal parathyroid gland was removed with that specimen. The op report uh, states that they saw, saw the, the left upper parathyroid gland and they left it alone. But um, as, as we'll see, that clearly was, was not the case. Uh, so this patient, not surprisingly, was not cured of her disease and found herself with three normal parathyroid glands having been removed. Uh, this is a pretty complicated situation, which we'll get into. Um, but she eventually found our center, contacted us, and um, we discussed her case at length, and she came to the center for evaluation. Uh, when she arrived, uh, we did our traditional imaging tests, um, and of course, based on what happened in her first operation, I, I sort of knew that she had a left upper parathyroid tumor that just hadn't been found. Uh, and that's what I expected to see. And I'm going to show you the imaging test that she had. So this is uh, our standard uh, nuclear medicine imaging test we do called the sesta scan. And as you can see, there's not a lot of anatomy on these scans, but they're, uh, they're shades of gray sort of that we interpret. And you get a sense of this patient's body here. Here's the left side. This is the right side. Um, these dark signals are, are salivary glands. They also take up this tracer. And this butterfly here is, is the thyroid gland that you're seeing. Now, obviously, this is the primary area we're interested in, and this is taken from straight on. These images you see here are from the side. You can see this patient looks like they're looking to the left. Here, they look like they're looking to the right. Um, and we do this to see how any uptake moves um, because that has implications as to whether we're, we're talking about an upper or a lower gland embryologically. Unfortunately, nothing really significant shows up here. Um, as I said, this is an anterior picture. This is the same view, but delayed 30 minutes. And there isn't much difference here to suggest where her, her problem is. Although, if you look closely, there is some subtle, on the delayed image, increase of retention of uptake of tracer here at the upper pole of the left lobe. You might have to just trust me on that. Um, so, after reviewing this with the patient, I performed an ultrasound at, uh, in the pre-op area. Okay, so uh, this is uh, one of the ultrasound images from that, from that ultrasound exam. And just to orient you here, because you know, it's hard to know what you're looking at, obviously, but the orientation of this image is that the patient's head is kind of in the screen, the feet are, or she's laying like this with feet pointing towards us, and these are cuts through the neck um, transversely. So you're looking up into the neck and cross-section from below. Hopefully that helps you a little bit. <laughs> Um, so what you're seeing here, this dark area here is the larynx. So we're up sort of towards the upper area of where we're typically talking about for this anatomy. This dark circle is the carotid artery. This is the very top of the left upper pole of the thyroid. That's what you're seeing here. 
And this structure here is what I found interesting. This is a hypoechoic area that shouldn't be there. And this is between the upper pole of the thyroid and the larynx. Now this is an unusual location for an upper parathyroid to exist, but um, people who are experienced like we are here know that this can be the case. And so this was very suspicious to me for an upper parathyroid tumor on the left. And of course that made sense based on what she uh, had done during her first operation. So um, after reviewing those images with the patient and discussing those findings, uh, again, I was pretty confident that that was her problem. That was a, a, an unusual location for a left upper parathyroid tumor. The complicating factor of this case is that her all of her normal glands were gone. They had been removed, unfortunately, during her first operation. And so the, the challenge here, challenge number one, is finding where her tumor is, and, and I, you know, we had solved that problem. Um, the next challenge is curing her of her disease while maintaining normal parathyroid function because um, having no parathyroid function, while it, you can live with that, it's not a great way to live. It's a problem as well. And so we really wanted to try to cure her while preserving normal function. Typically, we rely on normal glands to do that, but unfortunately, hers had all been removed. So we discussed the options, and what we um, do in these circumstances is that when you remove one of these tumors, uh, you can actually chop up some of that tumor tissue into very small pieces and put those pieces in a, any skeletal muscle in the body. Somebody years and years ago figured out that if you do that, they will actually function and provide parathyroid hormone for the body. Um, so we discussed those options and that was the plan. Uh, so we took her to the operating room. Um, getting to that location of that parathyroid tumor requires mobilizing the entire upper pole of the thyroid, freeing it up and exposing that space. So we did that. Um, found the tumor pretty easily and removed it. And then we performed what's called an autotransplantation. We chopped up some of those, that, that parathyroid tumor into very small pieces and put it in a skeletal muscle in her forearm, actually. It's an easy place to do that. Now, part of the problem here is that she, those autotransplant tissues don't start working usually for six months to a year. And so she, unfortunately, after that first operation that she had is guaranteed to have to deal with hypoparathyroidism for at least a period of time, but that's something that we can manage. And these autotransplants almost always function um, after that period of time. So she should do fine. Uh, but here's an example of uh, a pretty complicated situation and the ways that we can manage it. Um, and uh, again, if you have found yourself um, in a situation like this where you've had a, an operation that hasn't been successful and you're not quite sure what to do, consider giving us a call. I'd love to evaluate your case, and uh, we can almost always uh, solve your problem uh, successfully. Until next time, have a great day.